What's up, everybody? Welcome to for another classic review since we're in February. It's the month of love and full of bugs, so beep. Oh, you know what I'm going to talk about. So, by today until, well, there's going to be four films. I'm not counting the other one. The what I'm talking about, everybody's favorite number, Volkswagen Bug, Herbie. To you guys who are too young, well, and also the millennials who seen the, um, sorry, I don't count the fifth one. I never liked it. I like the originals because that's that. Something that, the that one that the master grab. So, what I'm going to talk about Herbie, his first film the Love Bug came out in 1968. It was directed by Robert Stevenson. And it's the first of the franchise by Walt Disney and distributed by Buena Vista Distribution. About a certain aphromatic, poor white, fabric sunroofed 1963 Volkswagen Bug. Which named Herbie. Which, of course. We all know who that car is. But before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you the bell? So, oh, you can buy yourself a new car? Make sure your car ain't alive. Has a mind of its own. Has an urge to race. If you do, well, good luck. And don't try to insult it. It will murder you. <laughs> I hope it ain't pristine, by the way. <laughs> so, the love bug was... Released back in 1968, and this was the first of, of the four original films of The Love Bugs. Starring Dean Jones as James Jim Douglas, the race driver. We also have, we also have Mitchell Lee as Carol Burnett, the love interest of, of Douglas. David Tomlinson as Peter Forndike, the owner of the shop. If you don't remember him, you might remember him as Mr... Banks from Mary Poppins, Professor Amelia's Brown from Ben Noms and Broomsticks. As here, he plays the villain here. We also have Buddy Hackett as Tennessee Steinmetz. If you don't remember Buddy, he's the voice of the groundhog. Pardon me, Pete, from Jack Frost, like I mentioned before last year. He's also the best friend and roommate of Jim Douglas, also, his mechanic. We have Joe Flynn as Harvishaw, Fordyke's right-hand man and stooge. Benson Fong as Tong Wu, Jim's friend and team supporter, or benefactor, since Herbie kind of wrecked his shop during a scene. I'm not joking. We also have Barry Kelly as the police sergeant, Iris Adrina, well... There's a lot of people there and unnoticeable because remember, this is from the 60s, so I'm gonna mention you wanna look it up? Look it up yourself. But the <clears throat> the story the project is quite interesting because Dean Jones credited the film's success to the fact that it was the last live action Disney film produced under Disney's Walt Disney's involvement. Released two years after his death. Uh, means Walt Disney was involved in this before the film was released and years it, let's see two years after he passed away so this was the last live action film he was involved with although Jones tried to pitch his him as a serious straightforward film project concerning the story of the first sports car ever brought in the United States Walt, Walt suggested a different car story for him, which was a car, boy, girl, a story written in 1961 by Gordon Buford. Car, boy, girl, the magical Volksy, Volky, which we actually call in Spanish, Volksy, the runaway wagon, the Beetle Bomb, Wonder Beetle, Bug Boom, and Thunderbug were among the original development titles considered for the film before they finalized as The Love Bug. You mentioned the title is called The Beetle Bomb? Bomber. <laughs> we got Wonder Beetle, Bug Boom, Thunderbug. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me. And Herbie competes in the Monterey Grand Prix, which, except for the 1963, was not a sports car race. The actual sports car race held in Monterey was the Monterey Sports Car Championship. The 1968 Monterey Grand Prix was, in fact, the can Series race and did not feature production cars. Peter Fordyke's yellow special is actually a 1965 Apollo GT, a rare sports car sold by the International Motor Cars of Oakland, California. It used an Italian build body and chassis from Inter... A Kanika paired with a small block Buick V8 engine that was installed on Oakland. This car exists today. It's in the hands of a private collector and it has been restored as it was seen in the film with its yellow paint and number 14 logo. As for Herbie, before the film entered production, the titular car was not specified as the Volkswagen Beetle. Disney set up a casting call for all dozen cars to audition. In a lineup, there were a few Toyotas, a TBR, a handful of Volvos, and MG, MG, and a pearl white Volkswagen Beetle. The Volkswagen Beetle was chosen as it was the only one that elicited the crew to reach out and pet it. Fuck! What? Good choice on the Volkswagen, Disney. You know how to choose a good car. <laughs> the Volkswagen brand name, Logo Shield, does not feature anywhere in the film, as the automaker did not permit Disney to use their name. The only logo can be briefly seen in the last two places, however, this the first instance is on the brake pedals during this first scene where Herbie takes control with Jim inside on the freeway when Herbie runs into Farndike's Ro Rolls Royce. And it's shown in all the future scenes when Jim is braking. The second instant is on the ignition key when Jim tries to shut down the braking Herbie. The later sequels were, produ uh, were produced, however, do promote the Volkswagen name as sales of the Beetle were down when the sequels at you were produced. The VW Wolfberg Castle emblem on the steering wheel hub is also seen through the car's interior shots. Within the script, the car was only referred as to as in her, its name, Herbie, the small car, or the bug. The latter, although common nicknames for the Beetle, was not trademarked by Volkswagen at the time of the filming. Damn, Herbie got car got smacked, didn't it? The car was later to give the name Herbie for one of Buddy Hackett's skits about a ski instructor named Klaus, who speaks with a German accent as he introduces his fellow ski instructor, who named Hans, Fritz, Wilhelm, San and Sandor, at the end of the skit. Hackett will say, if you ain't got a Herbie, ho pronounced Hobie, I ain't going. Herbie's trademark number 53 racing number was chosen by producer Bill Walsh, who was a fan of the Los Angeles LA Dodgers baseball player Don Drysdale. Drysdale's jersey number, later retired by the team, was number 53. Walsh also gave Herbie his trademark red, white, and blue racing stripes, presumably for more patriotic color, and came up with the film's gag such as Herbie's squirting oil and opening the doors by himself. Benson Fong, who played Mr. Wu, said that when he and the others were dragged along the dirt by Herbie, it was like being pulled by 40 horses. The 1961-65 Volkswagen Beetle actually were rated by the SAE at 40 horsepower, 30 kilowatts in the factory's configuration, through only 34 horsepower, 25 kilowatts by the European DIN system, which measured engine outputs as installed in the car with cooling fan and exhaust system attached. Harvey has his own cast building. In the closing credits, the only time this was done 
in the entire series of films. Today, only a handful of the original Herbie cars are known to exist. Car number 10 was recovered from a warehouse in Pennsylvania, and it has been preserved, still sporting its original paint from the film. That I can agree, because you don't have any Volkswagens for a scene. Example, take the one from the film Herbie Goes Bananas. They have to fuck up that car. Literally, they crashed it, sunk it, covered it in bananas. Have a challenge against a bull. <laughs> I wonder how many cars they had to do that scene there. <sighs> Scrapped. That's what I say. Some of them might remain in South America. <laughs> it might find some bananas in there. But we'll talk about that movie later. Stuck to the first one. And there were deleted scenes as well, which are quite rare. In the bonus of, on the DVD, provide two deleted scenes named Used Car Lot and Playground. A scene shot, but not included in the final cut of the film, featured Jim Culling out a used car lot prior to his visiting Foreign Dog's auto sh showroom. This missing sequence was considered to be lost. Well, remember, this is the 60s, so... We expect. Well, it has been long lost and missing. And all that remains is, a, is the script and a single black and white photograph of Jim talking with the salesman at the lot. An unfilmed scene at the end of the story that was script and storyboard was shown Herbie playing with children at a nearby playground prior to taking the newly married Jim and Carol, Carol off of their honeymoon. What? I want to see that. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> There's also, stock there is also stock footage. The opening scene of the Delusion Derby cars in the footage are fr footage from the film Fireball 500. Parts of the scene can be also be found in the 1966 model year dealer promotional film by Chevrolet titled Impact 66. Shooting locations, including some of the racetrack scenes, were shot in the Riverdale and Natural Raceway in Riverdale, Riverside, California. Others were filmed by Laguna Seca Raceway. In Monterey, California, Will Springs Raceway in Willow Springs, California, and Paramount Ranch at Agurora Hills, California. Additional scenes depicting the El Dorado race were filmed near the San Bernardino Mountains in Big Bear City, California. Fuck! How many locations in California are there? Damn! I think those places don't exist anymore since I think they're all skyscrapers now. I gotta check about that. <laughs> the cast and crew and the Granatelli, who was popular at the time as a presence at the Indianapolis 500 as well as spokesperson for the STP, appeared as himself as the racing associate president, announcer Gary Owens of Rowan and Martin's laugh Laughing fame, and Los Angeles Lakers play-by-play -play man Chick Hearn also appeared as themselves. The driving scenes were killer car Choreographed by veteran stuntman Kerry Lofton. Drivers in the film build in the opening credits were included De Dale Van Sickle, Reg Parton, Regina Parton, Tom Bamford, Dr Bob Drake, Marin J. Playton, Hull Brook, Bill Heckman, Ran Rick Ramsey, Hal Gritz, Lynn Great, Larry Schmidt, Richard Warlock, Dana Fairfoof, Derfus, sorry. Everett Greach, Choo. Gerald Jane, Bill Coach, Ted Duncan, Robert Holmes, Gene Roscoe, Jack Mahoney, Charles Willis, Richard Brill, Ro Roy Butterfield, Rudy Dosit, J.J. Wilson, Jim McCauley, Bud Atkins, Glenn Wilder, Ben Curtis, Robert James, Jim, John Timaeus, Bob Harris, Fred Crone, Richard Seary, Jesse Wayne, Jack Perkins, Fred Stromos, Ronnie Rondell, and Kim Brewer. Damn! That's a lot. I think these are the ones for the racing scene. The cars featured, which, okay, yeah, there are a bunch of cars, so these are the cars featured in the film. <laughs> Sorry. The cars featured in the film were the 1956 Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta, number 14, 1955 Oscar MT4 
Bacchetta, number 18. 1957 Chevrolet 210 two, two door sedan, number 23. 1959 1959 Devon D, number 47. 1959 Austin Healy 3000, number 64. Uh. I think this is 1950 ish. Kellison J4, number 82. 1960 Ferrari 250 GT Berlanta SWB. 1963 Apollo 30, 3500 GT number 14 1963 Shelby Cobra 2 2 286 number 20 1963 Triumph Spitfire number 4 number 96 1964 Jaguar XKE number 14 1965 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray C2 number 29 Oh boy. 1961. Bakowski Old Yeller. Mark IV. Number 41. 1966 Lamborghini. 400 GT. 2x2. 2 plus 2 actually. Sorry. And 1966 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray C2. Number 20. Good grief. That's a lot. That's some fancy cars there. <laughs> and this is from the 60s and the 50s. So yeah. These are cars from the prime. <laughs> during the promotion, during one scene in the film, Herbie has lost one of his wheels, and Tennessee is hanging out of the pastor's side door to balance them. The door opens, and there is no number three logo on the door. This image was used heavily to promote the film. <laughs> Funny, ain't it? As for Deception, The Love Bug was the second highest grossing film in 1969, earning over $51.2 million. At the domestic box office, it received mostly positive reviews from the critics, later earning 78% fresh Rotten Tomatoes. Vincent Canby of the New York Times panned the film as a long, sentinel Volkswagen commercial, which has the form of a fantasy comedy, lots of not very special effects, and no real humor. Easter, hey Vincent. Beep you. <laughs> Variety wrote for sheer interference and situation of charms as such an idea project, the Love Bug rates as one of the better entries of the Disney organization. Good. Charles Chaplin of the Los Angeles Times called it brisk, active, bright, technically impeccable, simple minded, full. Of tricky effects and free of all, but mostly glassy resemblance to nasty old reality. It is from the picture such troubles as there are arise many from the fact that the formula has no much stronger ingredients. Freddie McMurray and Flubber, let's say, in the past. The monthly film bulletin declared the film very engaging mechanical fantasy. It is the best piece of work from Disney Studios for some time. The caper appears to have an effect of injecting life into Robert Stevenson's usual pedestrian style, since with the exception of one glutinous sentinel, episode pace never lets up. <coughs> Sorry. There's a comic book about this called Gold Key, The Love Bug. Gold Key? Hmm, never knew about that. As there's a legacy, after four theatrical sequel fo sequels followed. Yeah, there's other... F well, I don't count the last one. Here's an order. The next one that came out was Herbie Rises Again, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, and the last one from that time period, Herbie Goes Bananas. And then came the Lindsay Lohan one, Herbie Fully Loaded. And I don't count that. Out. Some parts of the racing sequence from the film were later re reused for the second film in Herbie's dream sequence and Herbie Rides Again, where. Uh, where. I forgot. Tennessee's grandma. Grandma Stymus telling Willoughby Whitfield that, that Herbie's been a famous racing car, which is actually pretty cool. Connecting both the first and second film right there. And there was actually a five-episode television series called titled Herbie the Love Bug that aired on CBS in 1982. It was directed by Vincent McEvity. 
Whereas the series acted as a continuation of the films with Dean, Dean Jones reprising his role as Jim Douglas. There was a there was a made for television sequel, a remake of The Love Bug that includes a cameo of D Jim D Dean Jones as Jim D Douglas, which was the one people hated because this was the one with Herbie versus Evil Herbie. Yeah, his evil twin. That's the stupidest plot ever. <sighs> My mistake. This one and the other one are the two stankers. And of course, he had the recent one from 2005, Herbie Fully Loaded. As for home media, I actually own the VHSs of the, of the Love Bug collection. It was actually, I still have them, I think. They're around there somewhere. In the original, you know, the, not the paper ones, I meant the plastic ones. You know, the like like booklets, you open it and you put the tape inside? That one. And even have the DVD collection, which is... <laughs> I still love this series. The film was released on VHS on March 4th of 1980. And released again in 1985, and then 1991, and then 1994 with Herbie Rides Again. It was soon released again in 1997, along with the entire love... Bug series is called. Actually, there was a promotion back in each VHS. You watch a DVD, the show like beep, presenting the Love Bug collection. Yeah, the all the Love Bug. The first one was the Love Bug. Herbie rises again. Herbie goes to Monte Carlo, and then the final one from that time period goes bananas. Damn, you can't miss those old school intros promotion VHS tapes from the old days. Sorry today. You don't have no pizzazz from now. You take so much advantage to see it C CGI from those days. <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, and they released DVD back in the first time back in May twentieth, twenty o three. Then the forty fifth anniversary edition Blu-ray disc collection was released on twenty fourteen, which of course I owned it. It's actually pretty cool. And there are actually references to other films like the Superbug and and Christine. Never mind. But what are my thoughts about what are my favorite scenes about the Love Bug? Okay, Herbie has okay. I remember the opening scene was the the Derby scene when everybody's getting crashed and everything. I did not know it's actually scenes from a commercial from another film. Was actually pretty cool. <laughs> I thought this was a, okay, let's bring these derby guys and start crashing some cars up. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Walt will go for that. No. And we got Jim Douglas coming out of the wreck. Of course, he's taking the taxi or the cat or trolley. This is in San Francisco, so yeah. Of course, he looks around the, the auto show, which he spots a nice car. I think he was looking at a... I think it was a Ferrari, I think. What's a Ferrari? I don't know. No, oh, no, it wasn't a Ferrari. It was a Lamborghini 400 GT. And Hurry got jealous. He destroyed the damn thing. Holy shit. That's how you know Volkswagen Beetles are durable. Hurry just destroyed a Lamborghini at the time. <laughs> Which, of course, he Hurry tried to commit suicide, but instead actually wrecks a store, which belongs to Mr. Wu. Which, of course, he recognized Herbie, so they agreed to be the owner so they can let Jim race to pay for the meal. Which also bets against Thorndike at the Eldorado Raceway. Damn. They don't like good sense. They don't care that I like his Tennessee. One, he's like that positive, guru-inspired mechanic. You want, He's the mechanic you want in your crew. They give you positive vibes. And fun fact. His character is actually related to Mrs. Steinmetz. Which I believe to be his aunt or grandma. And guess where they're, Guess where Tennessee and Jim are staying? The old firehouse. Right there. In the first film. You see the firehouse with all the buildings. And when you see the second one. <laughs> the old thing left standing is the firehouse. Because everything was torn down by Mr. Hawk. Yeah, before and after. Wow.
I wonder if Firehouse is actually a set or a real one. I don't know. It was a, it was a real building. That should be a monument right there. <laughs> but yeah. At the end, I like when Mr. after Fordrag lost his store to a and that's the bet. If he loses, he gives ownership to his auto shop store to Mr. Wu, which of course he called Mr. Wu's show auto showroom with Tennessee as his business partner since both of them had a good relations, which I think it's called shit. What they, what they called his shop? Yeah, as his assistant in the most thorn dike at Hallfire's mechanic shop. Was, okay, that's it. Just, both of them just fight by spraying oil at each other. Another Mr. Wu company. Is that his full name, Mr. Wu? Yeah, another Wu company. And of course, Jim Douglas and Carol got married. And yeah, that was the love bug. And you have a lot of shenanigans here. When I say a lot, I meant a lot. Like, Herbie getting split up. Yeah, Herbie actually split up, I think. I don't know which one was. I know the, the direct-to-home video movie one, the TV one, did Herbie, but this one was when Herbie was split in the middle. This one was Herbie split in half. Tessie in the back, the other two in the front. So I guess this was the one where Herbie... Won by his his tail winning the race. Damn, that was weirder. They keep making they still cut in half, split in half, and you get split in the middle because it was a little laser. Like unlike the other one, this one was split by bad wielding. And Herbie's still alive from that. Damn, lucky he didn't get a talking. He'll scream like a little bitch, <laughs> or dick. I don't know what he is. It is. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Love Bug. It came out back in March 13th of 19. Well, actually, here's the thing. It came out December 24th, a day before Christmas in 1968. It was limited, then became worldwide in March 13th of 1969. Was earning a... Oh my god. If you didn't know the budget of this... The, the budget of the film was $5 million and earned $51.3. That's almost $200 million now. Whew. Man. Now that's a good bargain right there. So yeah, those are my thoughts on The Love Bug. Did you see the... When it was up? Okay, I'm not going to ask you if you've seen that because we're not immortal here. If you have, if you have a relative who has the VHS or the DVD, if you've seen clips of it on YouTube or it was on TV at some time let me know in the comments down below if let me guess if you've seen the fully loaded one I think you have a good question curiosity about this film with the other scenes from the opening credit now you get it but yeah if you're new to the channel remember to subscribe hit the bell like the video subscribe until then see you next time guys peace out